I'm going to try and be interactive. There's, there's a lot of you, so so we'll, we'll, we'll just try and work in a few stories here and just see what we we'll get to. Um, <coughs> there is a book that I recommend you read. It's out of copyright because it was written a while back. It's called The Poetics. And it was written by a guy called Aristotle. <laughs> And yes, you can find it online. Um, in fact, you can find several free and decent copies of it online. Um, uh, what I'm going to do now is give you the sort of like, for me, EG for dummies version, um, which is the, the sort of key structural elements of story. Pretty much always you need a protagonist in a story. That's the, the, the subject, the person who is going through your little adventure. Often the protagonist is you. Pretty much, if you want to have any impact at all, you need an audience. And deciding who your audience is is kind of important too, because while I would say that the general case is, is true, you know, your audience is human beings, um, there are definitely different kinds of human beings that you might want to target with particular messages. I'm sure you can think of some humorous ways mistargeting those messages, but for now let's just stick to appropriate time. Now, everybody wants to hear about the crisis. You know, we always hear, oh, well, you know, we never hear good news stories, we never hear bad news stories. One of the problems with good news stories is that they don't tell you what the crisis is about the good news story a lot of the time, and everybody wants to hear the crisis. If you walk into a room and you say, I've discovered the cure for cancer, you get a lot of people looking very strangely at you for a brief second and then trying their level best to ignore you. Yeah. Right? Their absolute level best to ignore you from that point on. If you walk into the same room, say a crowded party, and you say, Oh my God, I just screwed up bad. You will be able to hear a pin drop. <laughs> Everybody wants to know the crisis. Now the crisis in a business terms is, in business terms is often referred to as the customer's pain that you are solving. Nevertheless, it's the same thing. Now I will say this uh, to Irish people in particular. I have heard a lot of Irish stories, and the Irish story that goes crisis, 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 crisis is boring and does not flat. One crisis is sufficient. <laughs> Preferably pithily said. <laughs> the next thing that people want to know is, are you credible? Right? Who are you to be talking to me that way? As the Irish have sometimes said to me, with their eyes, if not their mouth. <laughs> the struggle, that is what gives you credibility. What have you done? What have you overcome? What have you researched? What have you experienced? What have you seen? What have you imagined? What have you lived? What have you paid for? What have you been fined for? What have you given a limb for? What deadly disease have you overcome? What struggle? What system have you put in place? What testing have you done? What struggle? Because if you're going to overcome a crisis, you've got to have some credibility. The struggle is your credibility. It is the reason that you are the expert. Finally, most importantly, is the resolution. The denouement of the story. In business terms, and in not-for-profit terms, that is how you leave people feeling at the end. If you don't describe how you're going to leave people feeling, they are very unlikely to buy into your story. Because the one thing that is toxic, allergic, deadly, poisonous, destructive to any business, to any endeavor, to any person, to any online endeavor, it's uncertainty. We hate it. The only thing more destructive than uncertainty is hypocrisy. We would sooner execute hypocrites than serial rapists, it seems. 
I would prefer the other way around. <laughs> if you leave people confused and doubting, if you leave them uncertain, they will not buy, they will not join, they will not follow. People do not like uncertainty. In many ways, those of you who want to start your own business, the job of a CEO, of a founder, of any business, really, 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 is probably more about handling uncertainty, translating that into some story that your followers can believe in, <coughs> support you in, than anything else. Because fundamentally, any startup is uncertain. Any startup. It's the hardest work you can do is starting your own business. I do not know a single person who, at the end of three years after starting their own business, whether they succeeded or not, has been able to turn around and say, well, that was easy. <laughs> Never met one. If I do meet one, I will study them, because I want to know. <laughs> but then again, the corporate thing might also be you know, playing a role. <coughs> Are you all with me so far? Yes. Excellent. Is this a bit of some use so far? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Excellent. Good. <clears throat> so, crisis, struggle, resolution. Now, it can be resolution, crisis, struggle. It can be struggle, resolution, crisis. You can mix it up a bit. Most people are listening for crisis, struggle, resolution. So, let me give you an example. <clears throat> About a year and a bit ago, I discovered through a mutual friend who's my co-founder that there are no computer programming courses in any Irish schools. Furthermore, I discovered that there are no computer programming courses in any primary schools that I can find anywhere in the developed or developing world. None. Now, that sounded odd, but then couple that with a little piece of knowledge that I have, which is that in business and in investment, the scarcest thing, the absolute scarcest thing right now are software developers and programmers who play well with others. Right? That is the hardest thing to find. You know, out of any 10 startups that would come to me for funding, probably nine do not have a development team and they're looking to outsource it. And I can tell you, outsourcing your development is a really bad way to make software. I mean, you know, you can outsource certain things, that's great, but outsourcing the core development and outsourcing the user interface, impossible to get right. You need to have people who can iterate stuff with you, that means improve it continuously, just like you're going to be iterating and improving your stories. So when you look at the fact that we're not training programmers young on mass and we're not, and we have a huge and growing demand for them and we're not even fulfilling today's demand, that to me is a crisis. So uh, my co-founder James Walton and I sat down together. He had started a computer club in his school teaching kids how to program. And he gave me one thing that was really interesting. You know I talked about testing before? He gave me a marker proof in like one paragraph. He told me that at his school, which is Prez somewhere in Cork, he won a web award, uh, international web award, and the school principal announced it over the PA system at press. And what happened next was that many children in that school, teenagers, sought him out and asked him, where did you learn that stuff and can I learn it? Now, I don't know about you, but for me, hearing that one random announcement in one random school generated seeking behavior amongst teenagers to find the geek. <laughs> That's market proof. I mean, that means the demand is unbelievable. So I had that market proof. And we sat down you know, together, and James was you know, telling me about his, his club and how he was leaving school. He'd just done his leaving, so the club was shutting down, and he wanted to continue that. So we sat together. We put together a framework. I put together a brand with him. We worked out, because I've spent 17 years in um, studying different pedagogies. We worked out a new system of learning based on martial arts. We call it pedagogy, as opposed to pedagogy. Um, and we trialled it. We trialled it for three months. Um, I got a free room and we, we, you know, we got kids in. 
And uh, at the end of the trial period, we had actually produced a 12-year-old who became the youngest commercially successful Apple app developer in history. So we figured it worked. <laughs> and now we have 138 dojos worldwide and uh, about 7,000 kids, I think actually closer now to 8,000 kids learning program every week. And they love it. These kids, it's like, we, it's like we're taking toys away from them, you know, the iPads and the iPhones, we're giving them keyboards and text editors, but it's really like handing them power tools and saying, go for it. And they love it, and their parents love it. They just, you know, the parents, we make the parents stay because we're not child learning service, and the parents get together and they socialize, and each of these new dojos is basically becoming a community hub, and there are, you know, are hundreds now, and my objective is thousands. It's called Coda, for programmer and dojo for temple of learning, right? just like martial arts, karate, dojo, Koda, dojo. So there you have a slightly long but crisis struggle resolution story about something that's actually happening in the real world. And if you look at Koda Dojo online, you'll see that you know it's, it, it has a lot of that story, a lot of that stuff baked in. But I can tell it to you, it also happens to work. Now, Coda Dojo is completely free. There's no business model, there's no bank account, nobody gets charged, no money changes hands, everything is donated. So it's actually just the story and the brand that make it happen. Because the story and the brand bring forth all the generosity for all the mentors that come, all the experts that come, all the people that donate their time, all the people that donate presences. In fact, there is a Coda Dojo here at UCC as well. That story is enough to actually have built a movement that is actually taking off. We spent a lot of time on that story, but we didn't spend uh, you know, months on it. We spent yeah, a couple of weeks on refining the story, refining the brand, and then we put the rest into testing.